So today's a bit different of a video. I've got a sponsor for today's video. It's King Bolin, and we're gonna be testing out this OBD2 scanner of theirs. The truth. Um, I've been given the opportunity from a company called King Bolin to test out one of their new scanners. So I'm gonna be comparing it to my old scanner, and I've got a buddy scanner um, that I'm borrowing as well. Um, I'll put a link down to my scanner, and I'll put a link to the King Bolin scanner as well. Um, but first, let's open this guy up and check out what's inside. This is the part number for the King Bolin scanner. I'll link it in the description below. So first impression of this thing, it actually looks like it's pretty decent quality. Um, not quite sure what the USB cord is for, but other than that, like my other ones, you just plug them in and they automatically turn on. So that's why I'm kind of confused by the, the plug-in scanner, but let's figure it out here in just a second. All right, so I've had a check engine light on the van for a couple days now, and I've been purposely not checking it just to see what the scanner is gonna say. So first, I'm going to try it with my old scanner. Um, it is a performance tool OBD2 scanner. Uh, it's pretty basic. I think I bought it for like 25, 30 bucks back in the day. Um, again, I'll put a link to this down in the description. But these are pretty cheap. Um, it's actually served me pretty well over the years. But I'm going to see if this new one does any better than this one. So let's get this one plugged in really quick. Now with it plugged in and the ignition on, but the motor off, I'm just gonna hit the enter button. It starts scanning. It says I've got some codes. We're gonna hit enter to see what they are. One pending, one fault. NA, NA. So with this scanner, you can erase them. And then you can do a couple other things. You can check the VIN number, you can rescan it. And that's pretty much it for this really basic scanner. Um, I'll try it out on my Mazda as well. I'll simulate a code and we'll try all three scanners on that as well. Just to see how each one does. So now that we know that this one doesn't really tell us much of anything. We're going to go ahead and try the new scanner. Alright, actually before I try the King Bolin one, I'm going to plug in the Actron. And see if it pulls up anything. Um... And then we'll see how accurate it is compared to this one. And of course, we're gonna turn on the ignition. Now with this one, we're gonna select read. I don't know how long it's gonna take. After a few tries, it keeps giving me a link error message. So let's see if the King Bowen one does any better. I am going to be testing all three of these out on my Mazda as well. Um, I'll make it, throw a code, and go from there. Now we're going to try out our King Bowen OBT2 scanner. So once again, we're going to plug it up. Turn the ignition on. So this one does give me a few options. We go with diagnostics. DCT lookup, uh, we can check our battery, and we can also look at our settings. So I'm going to check the battery really quick just to see what it's going to say. This is pretty interesting. It's a, a live count of how long it's been going on, and it's holding the voltage at 12.6. I'm curious if it'll drop down to like 12.5 since I just have the, the cluster on, but the van's not running. Um, and see if it drops down a little bit. But we could always test it later as well. But that's a pretty interesting little feature. Let's look at diagnostics. It's detecting. I'm going to go into MIL status, the top one here. ECM, PCM. And we're going to read codes. Let's start with stored codes. 
And reductant tank temperature sensor circuit range performance. And that's the only code it's giving me at the moment. So that's definitely interesting. It can read what my um, performance tool little thing couldn't read. Because it was just saying NA for the code. So let's see if there's anything on the pending codes. Nope. Permanent codes. Same one. Uh, let's go ahead and erase the code, see if it comes back. On. Click OK. And yep, it cleared my code. And now it's showing no codes are stored. No codes. And that one's going to be a permanent one. It's probably going to be a hard reset. Um, but it's interesting. We can go to live data too. Freeze frame if you want to capture something. Uh, vehicle information. I am readiness. Mode 6. O2 sensor test. And component test. I actually want to check out live data really quick. So let's go ahead and start the van. And then we're going to check this one out. Let's just go with all data streams. Oh yeah, it's getting real time. Let's check out RPMs. Uh, it's a quick, easy one while I can press the gas pedal and we can watch it. And you can check out the mass airflow changes and everything else. Scroll through whatever other options we got in this thing. That's interesting. It gives us our fuel timing, our fuel rate, all that good stuff as well. And a lot of these codes are actually in that little book. It tells you exactly what all these little things are. Um, we can look at that again here in just a second. But so far, I'm really liking this thing. It does a whole lot more than my cheap $20 one I bought a while back. Um, this thing's about the same price, and it does so much more. Now under the settings, you can go ahead and change the language, the units, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to change units um, just because I live here in the States. That way it shows like Fahrenheit and all that kind of good stuff whenever I look at any of these things. Get a live data again right quick. There we go, now it shows Fahrenheit and all that. PSI, miles per hour, all that good stuff. I'm actually really impressed with this little uh, code reader. But let's go try it on the Mazda. I'm gonna probably pull one of the coil packs, uh, the plug for it, just so it, it throws a code for like a misfire. And then we'll let all the code readers detect the misfire. Really natural. Alright, so I'm just going to detach this coil pack right here, uh, just kind of simulate I have a loss on this cylinder, and we'll see if the scanner picks it up on cylinder 4. Now I do have to start the car and get it running, just so it picks up on the misfire. So you can hear it running and it runs pretty rough, it's only running on 3 of the 4 cylinders, so the computer should pick it up here in just a minute. All right, so I took the car around the block to try and get the check engine light to come on and it still wouldn't come on. So I'm gonna just plug in with each one of the code readers and see if it'll pick up on the misfire and go from there. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my cheap one, the performance tool, um, and we're gonna see if this one can pick up on the misfire. All right, we're gonna scan really quick, see if it'll pick up on the misfire. Okay, it's showing something. Check it out, pending one. It's like misfire on cylinder four. Now the only thing I don't like about this one is it just gives you the, the code that the computer spits out. It doesn't like translate it or anything. We're gonna see if the other code readers do the same. But obviously we know this code is what it is because I pulled that connection. So let's see if the other ones do the same thing. All right, now we're gonna try this Actron one. Get it plugged up in here. And also see if it can, there we go, let's read. This is the second time that's given one. This one's giving me a link error. Uh, I did it on the van, now it's doing it on the Mazda. I don't know if it's something I'm doing with this one. Uh, this is a buddy of mine's, so I might just ask him, like, maybe there's something special about this one, but for some reason it's not very user friendly. Um, let's just try read codes again, see what happens. Yeah, it gives me a link error again. Um, it's kind of frustrating because I really wanted to test these three, but this one is being difficult for whatever reason. Um, if you know how to use this one better than I do, let me know. Um, it's just not very user friendly. Um, if I can't just plug in, read, and go through the codes and everything like that. Um, yeah, it's got read codes. That's what I tried to do, and it wouldn't do it. All right, now for our King Bowling. Let's give this one a try. All right, it's popping up already. Let's diagnose. It is cylinder four misfire detected. No permanent codes at the moment, but there is a pending code, which is probably why it hasn't popped up with the check engine light yet, because it's still pending becoming a stored code where it doesn't show anything at the moment. But still, it's pretty cool. Um, let's go to live data. It's actually pretty interesting, all the information it gives you. All right, just because I'm here and I want to check it out, I'm going to see the battery for the Mazda really quick. And you can see it's at 13.7, 13.6, 13.8. keeps kind of fluctuating. I don't know how well you can see it on the graph there, but it actually fluctuates just a little bit on the graph as well. Where when we had it on the van, it was just solid, steady the whole way across because, well, the van was off but this actually shows the small fluctuations. So it'd show you if you had like a, a parasitic draw or if it was not charging or anything like that, kind of any fluctuations in your actual battery voltage, whether it's running or it's off, you'd be able to see that. So that's a pretty cool feature as well on this little guy. All right, done with my test for now. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. I'm gonna shut the car off. I am going to plug this little guy back in before I forget, just so I don't have any issues when I go to drive this car again. Alright, so my final thoughts on all three of these. Uh, as you saw in the video, 
I couldn't get this one to work. It could be me. It could be this scanner. Um, I'm going to ask my buddy. Haven't had a chance yet. See if he's had any issues with it or if I'm doing something wrong. Uh, I could revisit these issues. But as of today and per this testing, I am not impressed with this one. Um, if it is just me, it's not very user friendly and that makes it very difficult to use uh, for just anyone. Now when it comes to my old one and this new one that I'm testing, uh, they're roughly the same price. So what you get for the money, this one is miles above this one. Um, I've had this one for several years. Uh, there, I'm sure there's bigger and better options. Um, this is a very basic one. Again, I've had this one for years since I started working on cars. Um, it's coming very handy. It just spits out a P0 blah, blah, blah code for you. And you just got to kind of Google it and figure out what it is. Um, with this one, though, it just tells you. There's no running around. There's no trying to figure things out. The only downside of this one, though, is there's a lot of different options in this one. So it can get a little overwhelming. But if you just sit down, take your time, use that little manual, uh, this one you can easily figure out. So would I recommend this one over something very basic like this? Absolutely. You can see so much more and you can do so much more with this one than you can with this little guy. Um, it's almost no contest. I would pay the money to get this one and be done with it instead of having to get this one and then Google search and then all the features this one offers this one doesn't even offer at all so this king bolin obt2 scanner is actually really good value for your money um i'll leave a link for it down in the description if you want to pick one up yourself but um yeah i'm super impressed with this thing and how good it did and how it showed me even with the mazda not having the check engine light on but i knew it was running rough it showed me that cylinder four had a misfire all right, so in this little book, it does go over each and every one of these little abbreviations. Um, so this is like the one time I wouldn't throw away the book because it does help you out a lot when it comes to what each one of these little things mean. Like TP, absolute throttle pressure, or position, excuse me. So, so you can go to any of these and MIS, misfire monitor. So, yeah, definitely hang on to the book if you got one of these. Well, I think this OBD2 scanner is going to be the next go-to for when I need to scan my vehicles. So I just got off the phone with my friend. Um, he said he used this on a Nissan Murano not too long ago, and it worked just fine. Um, he was saying that these don't work on every vehicle, though. Apparently, there's a lot of vehicles these don't work on. And I went and looked it up on Google. I'll put a screenshot up here in just a second. It doesn't work on like Subarus. It doesn't work on a lot of new GMs or Fords or a lot of other stuff. So that could be part of the problem I was having. But um, yeah, another reason I'm not a big fan of this one. But it may work on some of the older vehicles like uh, when the OBD2s first started. I think it was like the late 90s, I think, is when they started putting my cars. So, might work on those. I don't have any of those uh, right now. So, it's kind of hard to test this on this one. But, another reason I don't recommend this one. Now, I was told I can give an honest opinion about what I felt about this little OBT2 scanner. Um, I do like it a lot. Uh, especially compared to my old one and this one that I couldn't get working at all. So, I know it's kind of a, a small range of test uh, products, but... For the price, this one offers a lot. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. If you like any of the background music that was in this video, please check out the artist SoundCloud. His link is in the description.